After learning a lot of things about trigonometric functions, it's good to come back and apply all of these um, concepts into real life examples. Um, and those real life, exam uh, real life examples are very common. Um, I'm going to go through this one question taken from the Oxford uh, AASL book. Um, and I'm going to go through each part so you can uh, try it out on your own and then maybe skip to the part that you want to check. I'm going to assume you've read the question, so I'm not going to go into much detail explaining um, question itself. Just to know that t, which is your variable here, so the function is h of t, is the number of hours after midnight. So we're starting and let's assume we're doing the 24-hour cycle. So this is within a day, and which means that our the time within 24 hours will be from 0 until till 24 because by the time you hit 24 obviously you're in the next day so from 0 to 24 that's our domain so it's good to understand where we are within the domain it's also good to know that you have pi over 6 which means that your function will be in radians your trigonometric functions will be in radians so we're dealing with radians here now I will try to solve this as much as possible without a calculator but <clears throat> this is a calculator question so um, I will refer to the calculator every once in a while just to check the answers, but a lot of the things that I'm doing you can just quickly skip and use the calculator for. Um, now the first part we need the maximum and the minimum values of the depth of the wave. And if I go to my calculator, I've graphed it here already, I've used a 0 to 24 window in the x-axis, and um, I already kind of knew where the maximum and minimum would be, so I adjusted my y value. So you can look at the, um, you can go to second and calculate and then go for minimum or go for maximum to see what they are. So obviously the, the maximums will be the same, the minimums will be the same. I'm going to show you how to do it algebraically though. So um, the answers um, are straightforward in the calculator. But um, using the um, algebra, so this is set up as a function um, in terms of the um, when you uh, transform the trigonometric functions or graphs, this is the format it's in. You have um, you have a sine b x minus c plus d. So you have things like the vertical shift, the amplitude change, and the period change, and so on. The five here, or the a, represents the amplitude. So the the height. Where where does it go? from the center. So if you look at this graph, there's a center here. And from the center, you go up by an amount and you go down by the same amount. And that amount is given by the amplitude, so the A, which means it's 5. So the amplitude is 5, which means if this is my straight line, my graph is going to go up by 5 and down by 5. So this is a 5, this is a 5. Now, this would only be, the answer would be 5 if my graph was exactly centered, centered at 0. So the center line is at 0. Um, but it's not. There was a vertical shift that happened. And this vertical shift comes from the D part, which is 7. So um, what you have is, let's assume our graph was already at 0. So this is our sine graph. Uh, we have a 5 and a a negative 5 here say and a 5 here so our maximum would have been 5 our minimum would have been negative 5 but we have a vertical shift of a 7 so everything shifted up by 7 so now our maximum is uh, 5 plus 7 which is a 12 and our minimum is now at a 2 okay so this is where the graph is we have a maximum of 12 and a minimum of 2 so this is the final answer, maximum of 5, sorry, maximum of 12 and minimum of 2. Okay, so just it, this is how you could use the algebra or the graph, especially useful for like non-calculator papers, or just to get, reinforce that relationship between the graph properties and um, the graph properties and the properties you want from the, that you have from the equation. So this is part A. Um, for part B, 
they need the time uh, for the high tide. So we want to know when is it maximum. So we want to find the T. We want to solve for the angle. Now, I didn't like the wording of this question because there are a couple of times you could get a high tide. As you can see, within the 24 hours, you get two. Within the um, two maximums, and you get two minimums. Uh, that's for part C. So I think what they meant to this question was when is it a high tide for the first time? Um, so that would make more sense as a question. So what you're going to do is solve it to know when is it a maximum and when is it a minimum. And again, you can directly do it with a calculator. You can just look at what is this x value, um, this x value, but we need it for the first time. So you're going to pick this x value for the maximum. And then for part C, you're going to pick this value for the minimum. Now, again, I'm going to do it with algebra. So what you want to do is when you solve, you want to solve this equation, pi over 6, t minus 5, plus 7 equals to 12. Um, now what, just move this to another slide. What I want you to keep in mind is that now we are dealing with a lot of things happening in the function, and one of them is a period change. So we're bringing everything you learned here, and do take it one step at a time. Um, try to master the basics first before moving on to these real life examples. But if I want to solve this, notice how you have a coefficient here within the argument of sine, which means the period would change. So in a previous video, I've explained how you can deal with this period changes. So what you're going to do is first find the period. Um, and uh, the period is going to be 2 pi divided by this pi over 6, and that's going to give you 12. So my period is 12, so I'm going to have to add or subtract this 12 to the answers I get. So when you solve this, you can um, subtract 7 first and then divide by 5 here. So make sure you get rid of the things accordingly. So minus 7, then divide by 5, you're going to get... You're going to get this equal to uh, 1. That's nice. And then you take the sine inverse of that, and that's going to give you uh, pi over 2. Okay, and um, the sine inverse of that. But we are within 24 hours. So remember, t could be um, less than 24 or bigger than or equal to uh, 0. So I can keep on adding um, this period change to it um, but not yet let's just stick to adding um, 2 pi here if we want to um, let's just keep it as pi over 2 because we want to keep it within one duration and then add this 12 if we want to so uh, within the one set of solutions we have pi over 2 um, and then I'm going to divide by pi over 6 so I'm going to get t minus 5 equals to 3 and then add 5 on both sides, I'm going to get uh, t equals to 8. Okay, so um, 8 is what we have, but remember now that you've found the solution, you're going to have to add the periods in there. So I could add the period of 12, and that's going to give me 20. So it happens again at 20. Uh, so 8 a.m., remember t is the time, 8 a.m. and 20 so 20 would be 8 p.m. as well so um but i'd assume they won the first time it happened so this is your um answer at 8 a.m so we could do something similar for c we're going to solve it but this time instead of having it at 12 which is the maximum we're going to have it at um 2 which is the minimum so i have 5 sine pi over 6 t minus 5 plus 7 equals to 2. Again, subtract 7 on both sides uh, and then divide by 5 on both sides and you will get sine pi over 6. This time, very nicely, we get a negative 1. And solving this for sine, you're going to get um, you're going to get 3 pi over 2. So, um, 3 pi over 2, and then I'm going to divide by pi over 6. So I'm going to get a 9, 
and then add 5 to both sides, I'm going to get 14. Now, um, again, we have this period of 12, so if I add or subtract 12, so if I add 12, I'm actually going to be um, beyond the 24 hours, um, and if I subtract 12, I'm going to get to 2, okay? So um, adding 12 will give me 26, so this is adding 12, and um, subtracting 12 will give me this 2, and this 2 would be my other solution. So it's either at 2 a.m. or it's going to be at 2 p.m., so that's the 14. So this is what we get here. This is the 2 a.m., and this is the um, 2 p.m., which is 14. Um, which is why I just feel like the answer should have been a bit clearer that they want the first time there's a low tide. So just keep in mind you are within the domain, realize where the domain is, and um, follow through with the steps. This is a function that had a change in the period, so you need to add or subtract the period throughout to see if you're within the domain or not. Um, so that's for part uh, C. Now if we um, go to part D, what is the depth of the water at 9 a.m.? So the time here is 9, so T is equal to 9. This is a straightforward substitution, so I'm not going to go through the details. If you're going to do it with a non-calculator, um, you will end up with 5 root 3 over 2 plus 7. Um, and then if you use a calculator, this is approximately 11.33 um, let's keep it to three significant figures, 11.3 meters. Okay, so part D is quite nice. Um, for these questions, just read through all of them. If you couldn't do A, B, C just yet, you would definitely be able to do D no matter what the other answers are. So um, don't give up with these questions. Uh, the last one, find all the times during a 24 hour period when the depth of the water is three meters. Um, so this is again kind of solving the question. Now this is where they specify the 24 hour period. In the beginning they didn't and I think they were assuming that we are within, um, so they want to see it within the 12 hour period which is um, right here. So this is why you only get one low tide and one high tide solution, not the two others that we found. Um, but do keep in mind, um, it's a, you can use the graph, but I just feel like the question could have been made clear either here or here. Uh, but they've already specified that you are looking within the 24 hours. So if you want to solve it with a calculator and you want to know when it's equal to 3, meters you're going to put three here in the other y and graph it and when you're going to do this is already within 24 you're going to find all the points of intersection between those two lines so you can already say that we have four solutions so you can do that with a calculator and you're done with this part otherwise if you want to do it using a um, algebra so we have we want to know when is h of t equal to three and I'm going to solve it just as we did with the others. So nothing different, except that it's not going to kind of end up being a nice number. So it's not going to be 1 or negative 1. Um, so when you uh, subtract 7 from both sides, divide by 5 from both sides, we get sine, it's actually divided by 5, you get this is equal to a negative 4 over 5. Now, I would um, always recommend solving this for a positive value and then finding the corresponding quadrant. So we go back to the basics of solving trigonometric equations. This sign is negative and sine is negative on, in the um, third and fourth quadrant. But when you solve it, you want to solve it for the positive. So you want to do sine inverse of 4 over 5. And this is kind of where it's obvious that you need a calculator for this. Um, but what I meant with the algebra is just showing the method here. So um, you'll end up with um, you'll end up with negative sorry four point. So just taking the positive four over five. And remember, you're in radians. You'll end up with zero. 
0.9272 and that's the acute angle so that's the first quadrant but you need it in the third and the fourth quadrant so you're going to use the rules and you're going to go uh, pi plus this and two pi minus this and what that's going to give you um so not quite yet um so you're going to get two different answers so pi plus the solution So it means the two solutions you're looking at are either 4.06888. Let's move this to the left. And then you have pi over 6, t minus 5 equals 2, 5.35589. I'm putting as many decimal places, but I'm using the full figure in my calculator. Okay, so once we found these solutions in the third and the fourth quadrant, so these are your solutions, because um, this is what you have to do before you simplify it here. So now we get to simplify and find the actual t. Um, and so when you do that, you're going to get that t is equal to 12.771 here, and t is equal to 15.228. Um, so we get these two solutions and they are within the 24 hours. If I look on the graph, this is where um, these values are. And what we are going to do, well, remember we're the, within 24 hours, I can, the period is 12. So I can subtract or add 12. Now, if I add 12 here, um, go back to the beginning when I said the period was 12. If I add 12 here, it's going to be beyond the 24 hours. So I'll need to subtract 12. So and the answer minus 12 is going to give me 0 0.771. And you can convert this to minutes and hours, and that's going to give you um, 0 hours and 46 minutes. So that's, that's 46 minutes after midnight. And then if I go here and I, and I take the answer, if I add 12, again, I'm going to go beyond the answers. So I'm going to subtract by 12 again, and that is going to give me 3.22899, and that's my other solution. So I have four timings. Um, this is my first timing, and let me convert the others to timing. You can convert this to time, and that's going to give you uh, 12 and 46 so that's pm this is going to be if i convert it it's going to be 15 is just 3 pm so i have 3 and 14 pm and this will convert to 3 and 14 am so let me change this to am so this is am so we get these four solutions, and they're basically the intersections in the graph. But remember that t is in time, so you have to make sure that you um, that you follow through with the answer. So this is the first one. It's uh, 0 0.771. Uh, let's try the... Go to the second position, first curve, second third curve, uh, 3.22, that was our second solution. These are not in timing, you have to, these are not in 24-hour uh, format, so you have to change them. As in, they're in, they're in hours, but not hours and minutes. Um, then this is the, so again, well, this is the 12.771, and then the other one should be R15. First curve, second and third, and the, curve, the intersection is 15.228. Hopefully that's clear. If there's any part that you don't understand, refer to the previous videos that was done. Uh, tr again, try to master the basics in terms of like solving equations, you know, these things like, but going way back to quadrants and the unit circle and then bringing it all together.